I took a look at my animation plugin, Keyflow, and got to thinking to myself, less is more. So I Keyflow down, optimized its performance, and overall made it easier to use. For a limited time, you get 50% off Keyflow and anything else on my website by using code SUMMER at checkout. Link is in the description. So now I'm going to my fix panel, click on toolbar, and type in Keyflow. There's a free version, and also, the, of course, it's Keyflow Plus. I'm gonna grab the free version right now and drag it and drop it on my channel logo. If I go over to the Inspector tab and click on the Fusion icon on here, and double click on the group. My original version of Keyflow used about six different nodes. I have this now stripped down to only two nodes, optimizing performance. The master controls are the same controls you find on the transform node from within Fusion. Scrolling down here, you have the flip animation button. You just check this button and it'll flip any animation you create. Then of course you have your motion blur. The in and out represents the animation in and out. The time controls for your animation have been retooled. Instead of going by seconds, it's actually going by frames. By default, it's set to 24 FPS. If you're editing in any other timeline or any other FPS, you can just change it. So if you're overseas from the United States, I think usually you use 25 FPS. So you can just simply change it to 25 FPS according to whatever your timeline is. So if I set that back to 24 and I go to my cogwheel, you see how I'm in 24 FPS, so 24 frames equals one second. Therefore, if I wanted a longer animation, I just increase it by how many seconds I want. So if I want two seconds, of course, I type in 48, so on and so forth. These controls create an animation delay. So with the preset on my channel logo, if I want the animation to start roughly about two seconds in, I type in 48 to create a two second delay before any animation take place. Same thing with animation out. If I wanted to animate sooner, I just type in 48 and it'll animate two seconds faster than it normally would. Clicking the drop downs here, I simplified the controls. My original Keyflow had this, the timing controls for each one of the different parameters. Now they all map to one group of controls. I also simplified the animation in and out curves. So this is the beginning and end, whereas the original version had two sets of control or two sets of drop downs for both in and out animations. I also removed the middle position because myself, I didn't use it. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. But if you're familiar with the Atom Curves modifier with Infusion, this uses the same control. So offset will be the beginning animation and scale is the end of the animation. The position control is the only one that has an additional control, which controls the angle. Other than that, the controls are the same for these. Now if I go over here to the drop down and change it to Fusion Overlay, if I wanted to create a slide on animation and go over here to position controls, using offset control, I can just slide this off the screen. Typically I use it, type in negative one, if I move my playhead forward a little bit, I can go to scale and type in one. So now by default, it'll animate from in from the left. If I want to create like a bounce animation, I can select the drop down here and go to bounce. That has the little bounce at the end. With the position controls, you'll see this little green line here. So if I wanted to up, animate up or down, I could change the angle. So if I type in 90, which will give me a vertical rise here, then the little indicator will move straight up. You see the logo animating in from the bottom. And then if I type in negative 90, it'll animate in from the top. And of course, with this, if I move this playhead back just a little bit right here, I can move the angles to any position I want. And it'll just animate from that particular position. And the same thing applies with the zoom. So now if I go up here and hit reset, it's going to reset the parameters of the default. And I go in here to zoom. And so if I have offset set to zero and then have my scale set to one, it'll basically animate in. And of course, with the pivot control, if I move this down to the bottom of the image, it'll create a zoom in animation from the pivot point. Then rotation is the same thing. If I leave it at zero and then go to scale and type in 360, once again, it'll zoom in from the pivot point, but it also rotate from it as well. So you can have all three parameters on at the same time. So if I wanted to put this one, put this back to negative one, it will slide in, rotate, and zoom all at the same time. And if you want to flip the animation, just hit this flip animation control. And so basically it'll animate out. And then towards the end of my composition, it'll animate back in. Whatever you're animating and you don't want it to animate out, just uncheck this box here. So you just get the in animation. Then of course you check on motion blur. Motion blur is still pretty heavy, but it's not as heavy as it once was. And also render time's a lot faster now. That's actually in real time. I didn't have to wait for render cache. It's still a little choppy, but with the previous version, you pretty much would be sitting around waiting for it to animate. And that's with three different parameters on at the same time. Once you've gone through a major custom animation, you can go over here to export. You can give it a name. I'm just typing in test. And then I go up here and give it a name. Just call it zoom rotate or zoom row or something like that. You can click browse and browse your files for a particular image if you want to. Otherwise, it will take whatever's on your screen as the image. So actually, I'm going to go back to controls and turn off flip animation. So now if I wanted to, I can go back to export. Since I'm going to use this, I'm going to hit export thumbnail only and then hit export. As everything goes right, you'll get this little green indicator here. Give it a second. My computer has a lot of effects and stuff on it. So it does take a little while, but it eventually it will pop up in your Fusion effects. If you don't see it come up, you need to restart Fusion. All right, so I had to restart Fusion, but here it is, Keyflow Test. 
and the name of the preset and it's using the channel logo it's the thumbnail now if you pick up Kefo plus it'll come with these 30 different presets so you got position presets camera shake 2.5 view which is the will utilize the dve node from fusion which creates like this pseudo like 3d environment or 3d flip effects you have the zoom presets transform effects is basically utilizing all the different parameters i might delete the free version and go and drag and drop the plus version the initial controls are all the same but then you go down here to 2.5d 2.5d has its own set of timing controls but they're all mapped to these three so you have z space x rotation and y rotation so i go to z rotation and type in i'm gonna double click here and type in 30. so you see there it actually will rotate we're gonna rotate this 30 degree angle and then if i do the same thing with y rotation i'm typing in 60. so now it rotates 60 degrees z space is more or less a zoom but it actually zooms past the viewer or but yeah past the viewer so if I, I'm gonna go back up here and reset this, hit the drop down again and move my playhead to the beginning of the clip. I'm gonna move this and so you see a zoom in and then it'll zoom past the viewer. So if you wanna create zoom in transitions or tr zoom in effects through letters like this, you can do that with this. So I'm gonna just zoom in past that and then move my playhead a little bit forward, scale it back down, we'll scale it up to come back into view about right there. So now it's gonna create this zoom out effect with a zoom in effect. It has its own separate flip animation this also has its own separate motion blur that's separate from the master controls, just in case you want to have motion blur on these controls, but not on the, the 2.5 B effects or the DVE effects, because they are a little bit more taxing compared to the original transform. Now, if you use these space to try to create that effect where it zooms through the letters of your text, you can also reposition the zoom position by using a pivot, much like the master controls. So if I move the pivot over to this part of the G and I wanted to zoom in through there, if my little player, when it zooms in, it's gonna zoom into that part of the G instead of going through the, the S like it did earlier. Another thing is different with the plus version. If you go into the master controls, you'll see this easing control. You can change it from easing to custom, and then you also can create your own custom splines. So if you're familiar with the spline editor within Fusion, this is basically like a miniaturized version of it. You can use this here to create your own custom splines and save them using the export function. But go click at the Fusion icon up here. Once I'm in Fusion, the little keyboard shortcuts and stuff that works in Fusion only work in Fusion. So right now, if I'm messing with the spline, I'm going to straighten this back out as much as I can, at least. And if I hit F to flatten, it'll flatten out the curves here. The F to flatten key, the shortcut won't work on the edit page. It only works in Fusion. So if you want to do that, you have to go into Fusion to do so. You also can hit T and you bring up the ease in and ease out controls as well or you can just pull the handles and adjust them how you want to. So back on the edit page, the custom spline feature is usable on the master controls as well as the 2.5D. And I'm gonna reset this once again, and I'm gonna go over here to add-ons. So the add-ons are more or less all the same. So you click here, you got the camera shake. So it'll shake at the beginning and then shake at the end. And it also has its own set of controls as well. So you only have three set of timing control as opposed to like 15, 20 that we had in the previous version. Beyond these timing controls, you also have the shake control. So if you want to shake, you want a heavier shake on the x-axis, it'll shake heavier there, or you can just turn it off altogether by bringing it down to zero, and it'll just shake up and down the y-axis. Again, these are actually some presets I have here. So you have shake, shake slow, where actually the speed is slow down. You have 50% strength, you have 100% strength, then you have x, and then y. So if you want camera shake, all you gotta do is just drag and drop. So now I'm gonna disable camera shake and enable glow. I retooled the glow animation where it's not so taxing on the computer as well. My previous glow effect was basically doing too much. So it's more simplified. You had the thrush controls, the gain controls, glow size. You have two glow sizes for one for the inner glow and the outer glow. Then you have light strength. So if you turn this all the way down, you'll notice the image is pretty much still the same with just the glow is around it. Whereas if you go back to default, it looks as though the glow is affecting the actual image. Then you have your inner glow and outer glow. The inner glow, you typically want to leave white. And in the outer glow, you can change it to something else, but you can change the inner glow if you want to. However, if you do change it, it does kind of mute out whatever your outer glow is. So if I change this to, if I change it to red, it pretty much mute out that outer glow effect. You can still see a little bit of the blue there, which is more faded out. I'm gonna hit Control Z to change it back to white, and now you have more of the more of the blue is more prominent now. Now the glow effect is animated by default, so you see it kind of blowing in the wind. We go down here to wind controls. Actually, I'm gonna change this drop down to fusion overlay. And you should see, yeah, you see, now you have the little indicator there. It let you, it's indicating which way the wind is blowing. Going back up here, you got the brightness controls. This affects the actual glow itself. So the, the higher you crank it, actually the more brighter, not only brighter will it get, but it also will spread throughout the image. Same thing with the contrast. If you increase the contrast, it'll spread throughout the image as well. 
you can crank it up for a little bit more detail or you can turn it down for less detail and kind of give it this base like neon kind of like low you can also blur out the edges if you want or you can turn it all the way down and get more jagged edge more rough edges here and you can turn down the displacement strength <laughs> once again to give you more of a simplified kind of neon glow like if you turn it all the way down it pretty much kind of like erode behind whatever image you have it set on and from there everything else is the thing so if i hit disable on glow get the paper edge effect you can customize it you got the lens, actually I'm a disable paper edge. You got lens blur, so if you want to bring emphasis to something, you have these blurred edges. You can customize the strength of the edges, change the color of them, rotate it around, and also change the height and width of the, of the blur, well, the lens blur. You got this grid effect that you can use to line up your subject on the rule of thirds. You got the background effect, if you change from solid to gradient. You got the full power of the background node from Fusion. You go back up here, I forgot, you got drop shadow, and you create a little shadow behind whatever item that you're animating. It works on images, video, and text, but it only works on the text plus, not the regular text if you're on the edit page. So if I go now to zoom and go from zero to one, if I drag and drop this preset on there, go to the beginning of the play of the clip itself, and it'll zoom in from zero to one, because even though I'm on 24 FPS, if I want the animation to be longer, I can go here, click on the 24, and I type in 60, and just make the animation animate slower. And once again, if I go here to easing, hit the drop down, go to custom. I can use that custom curve, or I can create this ease in curve. If you do, if you're familiar with editing AMVs, you might be very used to this curve here. You see, it comes in real fast and it slows down dramatically towards the end. And then when you're done creating this custom curve or doing whatever you want to, of course, you can go to the export tab. And just like with the free version, you can export it and create your own custom presets that you can reuse over and over again. Or if you want, you can even sell them. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, be sure to drop them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And I'll see you in the next video.